So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as you can see on the PowerPoint slide, we have the question, uh, what is excites you about impact? So we're going to give it about a few 15, 20 seconds for you guys to think about it. And then if you want to raise your hand, um, and Dr. Parrish will call you out, and then you can go ahead and share out loud. Go ahead, Gabriel. Yeah, what excites me about um, this impact program, um, this is actually like my first time hearing about it, like uh, being in Yes Prep for like since middle school all the way up to high school is like, uh, I think it's a great opportunity for most students who are, have the ability to join and understand and, you know, I see other opportunities either in state or out state or how like it can benefit them with like going to college and I'm using that knowledge, you know. Great Thank response. you for sharing, and I think I saw Caesar's hand up. Arturo. Um, I'm excited about Impact because it gives me a chance to connect to colleges and schools that I didn't think about before. Thank you, Arturo and Eric. Did you want to go ahead and share out as well? Yeah, uh, one thing I'm excited about is that uh, finding out what what other opportunities it provides and discovering uh, ways I can uh, better my understanding in getting into these colleges. Thank you for everyone who've shared. So we do have another question. So this one is what makes you hesitant about applying to an impact school? And this one uh, can be answered by student or family parents if they're there with you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and request for you guys to go ahead and share out the hand and then raise your hand and then start sharing out. I see some hands raised. I will go with Miss Vanessa first, followed by Sergio. Um, cost of the schools is what makes me hesitant about applying to them. Thank you. You said the cost, Vanessa? Yes. Okay. And then go ahead and take it, Sergio. Yeah, similar to what Vanessa said, the cost. Um, we don't really quite know at this point how committed like some of these colleges are to covering the financial need that we meet. So yeah, I would like to learn a little bit more about that. And then we have Larry. Um, the distance from my home. Thank you, Larry. Um, anyone else? If we don't have anyone else uh, with their uh, hand raised, I'm going to give an opportunity for our representatives today um, to go ahead and share out um, any feedback that you are able to provide uh, to our students uh, regarding what they're hesitant about. Um, at the podium is all yours. So here at Sewanee, um, and so if you guys are not familiar, I forgot that I didn't mention where we were. So we're in Tennessee. Um, we are in Sewanee, Tennessee. We're about an hour outside of Nashville. So that's where we're located. But um, here at Sewanee, we have a commitment to meeting full needs. So what that means is that we work with students. So even outside of your Yes Prep scholarship, um, if you are admitted to Sewanee throughout the process, we still are committed to covering the rest of your needs. So Basically, what you do in the application process is you also submit a FAFSA and a CSS profile, which are financial aid applications that allow us to look at your family's financial situation and um, really kind of bridge that gap. So any need that you have, um, we're committed to meeting that through scholarships or grants. There is the possibility of loans as well, but we are um, able to really educate you and your parents about it. You do have the opportunity to decline them or to not accept them, um, but 
kind of being a private school, it allows us a lot of the times to keep the cost down, keep your average loans down. And so what I will say to students is um, a lot of the times private schools do have a higher sticker price is what I usually call it. Um, but go through the process, see what that will actually cost you um, because the average loan debt of our students is much, much lower than schools that are half our price. So um, it really kind of gives you an opportunity to explore schools that you may think are off your radar because of price, but knowing that that school is committed um, and we do have a commitment to meeting full need for all of the students that we admit. So if we admit you to the university, we are saying that we're guaranteeing that we will meet your full need at Suwannee. Yeah, and at Lycoming, we actually have the same exact system. Um, so we also are committed to meeting uh, full need to cost for all of our Yes Prep students. Um, you know, so so everything uh, that Leticia said is also true here at Lycoming. And really, um, you know, again, as, as she said as well, um, go through that process, you know, because it is different at every school, even among impact partners, there are slight differences. So really, you know, figuring out where you want to go, you know, your, your choices and kind of exploring what that that financial aid package looks like at each school is a great way to figure that out and learn more about it. Um, but, you know, at least for for the two of us, um, our, our schools offer uh, full need to cost for our impact scholars. Um, and then as for the other concern about, you know, being far from home, that's a super valid concern. Um, you know, I could go on all day about uh, the benefits of going to college away from home, um, just as much as I could talk about, um, you know, some of the challenges that come with that. So again, that's going to come down to, you know, what you feel comfortable with and uh, how, how far out of your comfort zone you want to push yourself. Because again, there are a lot of a lot of benefits, um, you know, academically, uh, professionally, you know, challenging yourself, becoming more independent. Um, all of those things can come with with you know going a little bit further from home um, and so some students really thrive in that environment so again it's really just going to come down to you know what you're comfortable with um, and here at Lycoming only half of our students come from within the state of Pennsylvania so we have you know 50 percent of our students coming from all over the U.S. and you know 15 other countries so you know that that's something as well as you know even though you're going far from home you're going to find a community of people who are also going far from home um, so you you can build you know your own support and, and learn ways to stay connected to your family and the things that are important to you back home while also you know challenging yourself and, and finding growth and being a little bit further from home perfect thank you guys so much for sharing let's go ahead and keep moving forward um we talked about um these different components that we feel you know make our partnership special okay the special opportunity to explore the variety of schools and colleges from across the country in this unique, intimate setting, right? The college affordability piece um, and the commitment that our partners have, have offered um, to make college affordable to you, right? The supports, again, that we'll talk about here in just a minute that will help you successfully transition from high school to college, persist through college, and then ultimately lead after college, right? Um, but let's get into a little bit more specifics about um, the, the yes prep side of it first, OK? Um, at this point, we want to remind you of what our impact colleges are committed to. Uh, number one, our impact colleges are committed to meeting the full need of students who are admitted as impact scholars. Number two, impact colleges are able to, um, our students are able to attend programs like Impact Saturday in order for you to connect, as well as our representatives for them to connect with you. Uh, they are providing a fly-in opportunity. Uh, most of the times they will have a, if not all of the times, a fly-in opportunity for our kids. Um, of course, it is safe or other admitted students day programs for impact scholars throughout the semester, throughout the year. And lastly, they offer a support system for impact scholars during transition through graduation, uh, graduating from college. 
Um, at this point, I don't know if you guys, um, for our representatives, if you guys want to go ahead and share out examples of how your colleges uh, best support our students. Tori, you want to take it first this time? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, so all, all of these things on the screen are, are absolutely true here at Lycoming. You know, a, as I mentioned, we we are committed to meeting full need to cost for all of our, our admitted yes prep folks. Um, in addition to that, uh, a couple of the supports we have in place, um, all of our all of our partnership students, yes prep and a few other partnerships that we have will um, come in with a partnership advocate um, and a, uh, so a partnership mentor who's a faculty member um, that will work, you know, one on one as an additional advisor. So in total, um, you're, you're going to have at least three advisors, your um, academic advisor, your career advisor, and then you all would also have a partnership advisor. Um, then you're going to have a peer advocate who's an upperclassman um, partnership student who has you know similar experiences to you, comes from a school similar to you, um, if not a yes prep school, um, one of our other partner schools. So we have those supports in place that can be you know individualized and, and help you, especially in that first year, get oriented. Um, and then before that, um, you know we do have fly-in programs. With COVID, we've had to adapt them to be virtual fly-in programs. Um, you know, so just all kinds of different ways for you to get to know um, not just like home in college, but how um, that experience is for partnership students specifically and what kind of supports um, are available to you in addition to the supports that are in place for all of our students. Yeah, and here at Swanee, um, we really have a lot of the same things. And so really the process um, provides a lot of mentorship. When you're at Sewanee, we have something called Sewanee Connect that allows you to be paired with an upper class student, um, upper class student, just as Troy said, and really kind of gives you that mentorship and that person to turn to when you are new on campus that has been there for a few years. We also do provide fly-in opportunities. Of course, we've also had to make those virtual in the past um, past year, so we're assuming they're probably going to be virtual again this year, but we do um, provide that. And and we hope to still provide enriching virtual opportunities for you to get to know campus as much as possible. Um, and then really in terms of advising on our campus, we have an integrated advising system. So you will have an advisor all four years um, and someone that is there not only for academic support, but for um, kind of support all around. So anything that you need as a student, um, we have that person there that's going to help you and going to be be there to guide you through those four years at Sewanee. And so um, really without kind of just mirroring what was just said, we have a lot of support and we're in really committed to um, making your transition to college as best as it can be through our orientation programs and through our um, specific support that we have for Yes Prep. Um, scholars. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, would you guys be able to provide a little bit more feedback when it comes to your particular college? Um, when it comes to first generation college student programs or uh, support organizations? Yeah, that, that's a great one. So we do have um, some specific support for our first gen students and so that starts even as early as our orientation process so during orientation which happens the first few days before classes start you come a little bit early to really kind of get yourself oriented to the campus community and so we do have supports and programs in that orientation built in for you to learn um, who your resources are on campus and to meet other students who are also first gen like you and so understanding that we have the supports in place and really introducing you to those supports and those resources happens the minute that you step on campus. Um, and then we do have organizations and support throughout your time at Sewanee that will continue on as well. Yeah, and, and Lycoming is going to be very similar again. Um, you know, we have a lot of a lot of the same uh, programs in place, um, you know, and, and really Honestly, um, a lot of our first year student programming comes from the perspective that, you know, 
uh, almost approaches all students as first generation college students, because even if your parents went to college, that doesn't mean that their experience was the same as Lycoming or the same as going to college in the year 2021. Um, so, you know, a lot of our programming kind of comes from the perspective that you don't know what it's like to be a college student or specifically a college student at Lycoming. We wanna make sure that all of our students are aware of those resources and have access there. So, you know, I would say there, there's definitely some specific programming and groups um, around the first generation college student um, experience, but also um, there's just a lot of support in place for um, first year students in general. Perfect. So thank you so much for sharing um, another um, request support services for dreamers or DACA students within your campus. Yes, that's a great question. So a lot of we do um, have some DACA students and DREAMA students at our campus and we have that built into our integrated advising system. Um, and so we have support and resources that are available for students. Um, we don't necessarily, I would say, have um, a mentorship or an advising system that is strictly for DACA students or DREAMer students, but we do have these students on campus and we do have support built in through the resources that we are offering to all students on campus. Yeah, and, and again, I'm going to kind of echo that. That's very similar to, to how things would be at Lycoming. Um, I can't say that we have uh, many specific uh, supports in place, but again, those supports that are there for all students are, are you know, intentional around those those issues. Um, and we, we, of course, admit um, undocumented students um, and, and we meet um, full financial aid there just because of the, you know, inability for federal funding. So, um, you know, it does also, I would just mention it, it is a little bit more competitive um, at Lycoming just because of that, you know, financial um, difficulty there because we are committed to making sure that it's actually an affordable experience rather than setting you up for failure. Yeah, and I'll mirror that, that that's pretty much the same as Swanee as well. And so going back to Yes Prep, we're going to support you by helping you build relationships with other impact eligible students, okay? our Teams community. So you've all been added over the past couple of weeks to um, Impact 2022 uh, Scholars Teams page. And so that's going to help you interact with other Impact students from across the district, OK? Not just at your campus. So one, I guess, benefit of all this virtual learning is that we have been able to establish a more robust um, um, platform so that the entire district can kind of engage in some of these conversations and and participate in in some of these programs okay so definitely take advantage of that um, myself mr estelle the rest of the directors of college counseling also have access to that page um, mr keaton who's um, at the home office and then mr trevino who's the managing director of college initiatives um, also have access to that page so if you have questions um, you know, definitely drop them in in that team's chat in future weeks, months and so on, and we'll be able to address that. It'll be important because uh, we'll also be um, um, dropping announcements for these different opportunities, as Dr. Miles mentioned, like interviewing. So when we hear that, you know, St. Olaf is, is setting up an interview schedule, we're going to drop that into uh, the, the team's chat and reach out to those students that have either specifically selected St. Olaf you know, for uh, that's on their college list or um, reach out and say, you know, and then just, you know, confirm that you have uh, participated in, in that opportunity. So that's that's definitely something that has been somewhat of a benefit from from all of this um, advising. Right. We talked a little bit about this, but during during advising, your college counselor is going to help you work through your fit factors. OK, um, and to help build a college list that reflects the schools that are really right for you, including um, our impact partners. So later on, um, when we break off into individual campuses, we're going to discuss, you know, what that looks like. Um, hopefully in junior seminar, you've been introduced to 
um, start the college research project. Um, that's starting to happen, right? And so really the hope is in conjunction with junior seminar and meetings, individual meetings with your college counselor, by the end of junior year, you're going to have like a pretty solid college list um, that you, you feel confident, like you, you again, understand the the benefits of those schools, the opportunities at those schools, the challenges that you might face at those schools um, by the end of this year. OK, so that moving forward, you know, we can really dive into what else do we need to do um, to bring clarity um, to your college search as a senior. All right. Then finally, um, as you can see, our Yes Prep alumni team will still support you, okay? Um, our alumni advisors reach out to students at all the impact schools. Uh, we host different gatherings with students um, to ensure that you are, you know, that we're living up to our partners, end of the partnership, and then our impact schools are living up to their partnership, okay? And so again, pre-COVID, we had our alumni advisors actually visiting um, those campuses and setting up like, um, you know, little coffee chats and or dinners um, with uh, former Yes Prep students that are that are currently enrolled in those schools to check in, you know, make sure um, academically things are going smoothly, socially things are going smoothly, financially and so on. I myself and I know Mr. Stell, uh, we definitely try to reach out. Uh, you're not going to lose lose communication with us at the end of uh, at the end of um, your senior year, we're definitely going to continue to reach out and support in any ways um, that that we can to, you know, again, help with successful transition and persistence at those schools. So you're, you're not going to get rid of us that easily. Mr. Estelle, do you have anything else to add about any of these um, bullets? Um, I think the biggest thing is that the support is something that is often overlooked. I think we students and families initially look at the financial piece, and I think that is super important and, and a huge factor in um, students attending a school. But the support, not only from um, the institutions, it is I think one of the the vital pieces in students persisting and graduating, but also knowing that you all have the alumni team in your home campuses to support you through that is something that I really want you to keep in mind um, and that you are also probably going to go to school with a cohort of students from across the district. And that's another support piece that um, is overlooked and that you go in with people who may not have gone to school with you on your campus, but have similar experiences, similar mindsets, um, and if not similar like affinity uh, attraction there. So, so if you have those things aligned, then you have a support on your campus that you is kind of built in. So don't overlook that because it the impact partnership provides a lot of things. And those are just some of the aspects that I think get overlooked um, when students are thinking about their schools and where to matriculate or even to apply. Thank you. But as Mr. Estelle mentioned, financial need and financial affordability is usually um, something that we gravitate to first, okay? And so, as I mentioned in the previous previous room, um, over the next year, you and your parents are gonna become pretty familiar with uh, terminology around college cost. And again, if you become an impact scholar, that college is really gonna do an amazing job of covering financial gaps between your federal aid, Expected, expected contribution and cost of attending their school. So I'm going to try to do like a real simple example here. We'll see how it goes. Let's say let's say a college costs $50,000 a year. That's tuition and fees. So that's like academics and then room and board. Uh, that's living on campus in a dorm room and board is or yeah, board is your meals. OK, um, and then potentially other other expenses, travel costs, living expenses, things like that, $50,000. So after you complete your FAFSA, which is, does anyone wanna, oh man, I should have prepared better for this. Anyone wanna go for what FAFSA stands for? Special props. No, crickets. <laughs> the free application for federal student aid, okay? So most importantly, okay, it's free. 
um, that you will you will fill that out um, your fall of your senior year, okay? And it's based off of uh, your family's income for the most part. Keep it simple. Um, so let's say the government reviews that and says you can afford to pay three thousand dollars a year, right? So that means what? You're going to need forty-seven thousand dollars to pay, or that's that you you pay the three thousand dollars. That's leaving. $47,000 off of that $50,000 to cover the cost of that school, okay? So we still need that dollar amount, right? Again, with impact through scholarships, grants, work study, possibility of loans, but the majority of our schools uh, have eliminated that, that component of their financial aid award, they're gonna cover that remaining cost, okay? So again, as an impact scholar, they're going to cover that $47,000 so you can attend that school. Pretty amazing, right? For the next slide, uh, we're going to go ahead and start discussing financial need. Um, I believe that there will be the need of us being grounded on what does financial need means financial aid met and any other scholarships, grants, loans, opportunities, and the difference. So um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give it again back to our representatives if they want to give us and provide us feedback about how that works at your particular institution. Yeah, so um, throughout the admission process, we are reviewing every single student that applies to Swanee for merit aid. So we review you through the application process um, and we are specifically when we are reviewing our Yes Prep students, we are reviewing you basically for admission because we know um, that you do have a Yes Prep scholarship, but we are kind of reviewing you as a whole throughout the process. The financial need piece um, is separate. So you do again, like I mentioned earlier, need to submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile to be considered for financial aid. And the process is pretty seamless in that regard. Um, if admitted to Suwannee, you um, will learn of that and you will learn of your full financial aid summary usually like a few weeks later after your admission decision comes. So that's how that process will work. Um, and then you have all of that information far enough in advance to really make an informed decision. So that's what we mean when we say go through the process. Don't count out a school just because of the price or um, because of anything like that, because once you go through the process, I think you'd be surprised to find how affordable um, some schools can be, even if they don't seem like it, based again on the sticker price. So um, go through the process. It's pretty seamless. It's just important for you to get all of the documents in on time. Um, that way you are considered for all of the opportunities and all of the resources that we have here at Sewanee. And then Myself, you know, are the other admission reps that you'll meet today. We're here if you have questions to help you along through the process. Um, and then really you get all of that information again to, to make an informed decision. Yeah, and once again, very similar at Lycoming. Um, you know, we, we, um, we actually um, make decisions on all of our partnership students within the same week. Um, so we have several partnerships, Yes Prep and some, some other schools. And so um, you, you would basically um, be hearing back by the end of January. Usually our committee will meet in January. So just for you to have in your head in terms of timeline, um, even if you apply in October, you know, we do um, take all of our partnership at the same time. And then, you know, while we're reviewing for admission, just like Suwani, we're also so reviewing for that merit-based scholarship um, and then within two weeks of your decision you're going to receive that full financial aid package as long as you've completed your FAFSA um, and so with Lycoming um, we only use the FAFSA so that would be the only real difference that I would highlight is that we don't use the CSS profile so um, all you have to do is your FAFSA and again, you know, like like uh, Letitia said, your your admissions counselors are here to support you. So if I have your application and I know you've been accepted, I can see that you haven't done your FAFSA. So you could expect that I'd be reaching out to you and saying, hey, you know, I really want to get you your full financial aid package. We just need you to get
get your your FAFSA done, and then your Yes Prep scholars are going to be saying the same thing, or your Yes Prep counselors. Um, so you know that it's really the, uh, the same process, um, just a, a few differences there, and that we don't um, we don't require the CSS. Here's an example um, award letter. These are individualized to each student and each student's expected family contribution, OK? <clears throat> but here's the difference in what aid might be received by students. So the first example is a student who is accepted um, to two different private colleges. One is an impact school and one is not. I'll let you take a look at that and partners if you want to take a look as well um, and then kind of maybe offer your interpretation of of that example award letter. Does that sound right? So as an impact college, tuition, room and board. Can you guys see my arrow? No, probably not. Um, you have tuition at 42,000, room and board at 13,000, estimated fees at 1,000. Your total direct cost right, is $56,000. This impact college has offered $52,000 in scholarship and grant aid, okay? So they have a $26 scholarship that's based on your academic profile, a college grant, which might be based off of both academic as well as need, and then your Pell, which is um, your Pell grant is the federal grant that you will receive potentially from uh, the, the your submission of your FAFSA. OK, and then subsidized and unsubsidized loans, and we'll get into those a little bit later on, but um, subsidized is a non-interest earning loan as long as you are main, uh, maintaining full-time student status in college. And then an unsubsidized uh, loan is, uh, it does accrue interest, but um, these are pretty low interest rates at um, like 4%, maybe 5% if, if that. So your total direct aid, okay, is gonna be $57,461 for a total direct expense of 56,000. So they're offering you or offering this student more than what it actually costs, okay? So again, working with your counselor later on as a senior, we'd be like, okay, do we need to take out this loan? Probably not, right? And so on. So getting a little bit in the weeds of the numbers, but you can see that that's um, kind of the basic model that many of our impact schools will probably follow. Uh, Dr. Oh, Miles, uh, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. So it this looks this looks this is correct. I mean, even at St. Olaf College, this is exactly what it would look like. But I do want to highlight that at St. Olaf College, we are very, very lucky because we are one of 80 schools who are fully who are fully committed to meeting 100% of need for our students. And we have about 98% of our students receive receive some type of grant or scholarship, and about 80% of our students receive. Um, some type of financial aid, but this looks exactly correct as if you were applying to St. Olaf College and receiving a financial aid award letter. Right. And I can concur for Rice as well. Uh, we also meet 100% of unmet need um, and for students whose families are under $200,000, it will not include student loans. Awesome, thank you. And so, yeah, just doubling down, that's the case for a majority of our impact partners is um, either the no loan option um, because this isn't including work study. So you'll also see that as a component um, in your award letter. So again, junior seminar, we're gonna probably talk a little bit about like um, the FAFSA forecaster or EFC calculator. So parents if there are parents in the room um, we would ask that you know again here's the trust um, we're going to ask that you share maybe uh, your 1040 um, uh, tax return uh, with your student so that we can we can work with them to get just a general estimate of what 
the expected family contribution might be um, from uh, for you as we enter into a more um, as we enter into the college search process. So that's going to be an assignment um, at some point in junior seminar this spring. And then again, uh, we're going to work really closely with you all um, as college counselors during senior year to make sure that um, you know we're crossing all our T's and dotting our I's when it comes to financial aid. OK, the FAFSA opens up on October 1st. I know at Southwest, I want to say like two thirds of the students submitted their FAFSA within that month. Mr. Estelle, I'm sure you had North Central um, uh, doing a very similar um, submission, right? Uh, because we know it's it's that's probably the, one of the more stressful components of the college application process. And, and it, it does change, it seems, every year um, in terms of the federal government and what they're asking for in terms of um, tax transcripts and um, non-filer documents and things like that. So again, working with your college counselor and the CI team at your individual campus, um, I really want to say that you know we've gotten pretty good at at figuring out you know unique um, financial situations and working with families to um, identify how to best um, report that uh, for uh, both uh, the the schools and and for the students. Let's see. And then here's just another example of an impact college, slightly higher estimated costs, but compared to a Texas, Texas public university, obviously outside of Houston, um, where the student would potentially live on campus. Um, and then just the difference between uh, what uh, the impact colleges and universities might offer compared to um, one of our many great uh, institutions uh, across the state of Texas. So the point really is, OK, the estimated expenses at our impact schools might be higher, double, triple high, you know, the, the amount of maybe some of our Texas public schools, OK? But when it comes to the overall aid that is offered to students, it's very different, OK? And so we want you to keep an open eye and open mind on um, again the the opportunity or the potential of becoming an impact scholar and not shying away from applying to these schools because of the initial sticker price. OK. Um, that that definitely is not the case for for our our scholars that are are chosen. Any questions? thoughts, concerns from students at this time about looking at those two examples. Feel free to drop them in the chat or raise raise your hand. Mr. Stell, um, Dr. Miles, Shannon, do you have anything else to add? Oh, I think you did a great job. All right, cool. One thing that it's good to add is you have worked so hard to be here, guys. Um, and one thing that we, we want to make sure that you understand is that um, everything that you've been working towards your uh, last three years up until junior year um, has set you apart from a group of students where you actually have uh, come to meet specific requirements in order for you to partake on this event, which is a great opportunity for you guys. And, and to be completely honest, I, I believe that you guys can also, uh, when you go back to campus, when you are taking classes and stuff like that, continue to encourage your, your peers to get there and, and be a support for them um, at this point. Um, so, the outline for our impact eligibility this year, um, it's going to remain at 3.4 um, GPA, grade point average. And then our test option, um, the, when it comes to the SAT, uh, we're going to be grounded on test optional and there's no required SAT score. Um, for Particularly for this event, 
I don't know if you, uh, the partners, uh, impact partners or representatives, you guys want to add anything to, to the actual impact eligibility or anything else that we should be aware of when it comes to SAT? Are you both test optional institutions this year or next year? Yeah, Sewanee so is test optional. Um, so really there's nothing more um, that we are adding. Um, just so you're aware, average GPA at Sewanee is about a 3.7, but we definitely do a holistic review. So we're looking at all parts of the application, not just your GPA. Um, and then understanding that, you know, at many smaller liberal arts colleges, we definitely also look at um, interest and just how engaged you are throughout the process. And I think that that for one, gives us a chance to get to know you, but also gives you a chance to get to know the institution. So I urge you to um, also just get in, engaged and sign up for things. A lot of schools are offering a ton of virtual things right now just to learn more about the impact partner schools that you might be interested in um, instead of just applying to them. And then, you know, what if you get in and then you don't really know anything about the school or um, things like that. So engage throughout the process. It also gives us the chance to kind of get to know you and get more context to your application as well. Yeah, and, and again, very similar with Lycoming. Um, that engagement is huge. We also do a holistic review, um, you know, so the more we know about you, the better your chances are, not just your academic profile, but who you are, how interested in Lycoming are you, what are you going to bring to our campus, those kinds of things hold a lot of weight. Um, in, in regard to the test optional question, um, so for this year, we, we are fully test optional in the past and potentially in the future, depending on, you know, how, how the pandemic um, impacts us. We may or may not return to our previous policy, which is that um, students in the top 50 percent of their graduated graduating class um, can apply test optional. Um, and, and traditionally with that, we've requested two graded writing samples to be submitted with that test optional. Um, so that that was our previous policy. We may or may not return to that. Um, you know, our, our decision hasn't really been made on that. Um, but but if it remains as it is right now, um, you, you would just apply with or with about test scores. Um, so I guess to be determined um, in terms of like Lycoming's test optional. Perfect. Tori, is there an average GPA um, for our students to be aware of when it comes to Lycoming? Um, great question. Um, off the top of my head, I'm actually not sure in terms of partnership students. Our, our typical overall average incoming GPA is around a 3.5. Um, but we do find that our yes prep students are usually a bit above that. So, um, you know, yes prep students, you know, might have a little bit of a higher uh, average GPA, which would of course make it a little bit more competitive than if, if they were not yes prep students. Perfect. I believe that um, that gives our students uh, an opportunity to learn a little bit more about what's the difference between GPA, their average for every campus, and then also what holistic review looks like. Um, are there any questions for us? Uh, due to COVID, all of our impact um, partners this year are test optional. Um, but then I want to open that up again to Dr. Miles and Shannon, just in terms of like um, what what has been stated for test optional for moving forward um, or just how you guys have reviewed or started to review um, this year's groups of seniors um, in the in the admissions process. Yeah, definitely. So for Rice, I know for this past year we have been test optional and we are going to be test optional for the class of 2022. And so we say test optional, but I think we're a little bit more test flexible. And what that means is that if you decide to submit tests, you're going to have options on what you can send or what you can send what you like. Basically, it's very flexible. If you want to send PSA, uh, PSAT testing or if you want to just send AP or any type of testing you can but also you can choose not to and so I always advise students if you think it's going to help your application then you can choose to send it but if you're like you know what I've got a strong application without testing I've got all these other components uh, through the holistic review that I think are, are 
uh, going to be looked at uh, even strongly over testing, then you don't have to send it. And when I have been reading applications with no testing, there is no like biased uh, uh, opinion that I have. I just simply don't look at it. I just look at the grades as your academic performance. And so if you feel like, well, I think I should still send my test, but I'm unsure, just remember, if you think it's a positive helping your application, always send us all your positives. Uh, but if you're not sure, you know what? You're not going to be at any disadvantage if you don't. Thank you. I definitely reiterate that. I think if it's if your test scores are positive, send them. If not, at St. Olaf College, don't send them. Test scores are not required for admission. And moving forward, we will not require um, tests, ACTs or, or SATs for admission. It's a holistic review process. So as I mentioned before, we look at that demonstrated interest. We want to see if you are really serious about St. Olaf College and the high school transcript. <clears throat> and how are, how involved are you in the classroom and outside of the classroom? I think that's very important. So some of you, based on everyone, and every student has a particular story. Every student has their own experience. So you may not have the opportunity to be in the sports at your school or in a club or organization because you have to work because you're helping your family. That's okay. You wanna address that in your application. Thanks.